The Ever-Changing Wetlands of Northern Colorado is a collaborative project between Colorado State University, Department of Ecosystem Science and Sustainability students, and the Colorado Natural Heritage Program. It is a comparative study of four wetland ecosystems in Pawnee National Grassland and on the Poudre River between their past and present conditions. The Colorado Natural Heritage Program, um, what we are concerned about and, and study is the biodiversity of Colorado. And it's like, what the heck is biodiversity? Well, for us, it's just the range of life um, from common to the rarest. We're able to track a species or a plant community's uniqueness by using this um, global rank system developed by NatureServe. And it's very sim it's very simple. It's a um, or excuse me, it's a one through five with one being the rarest and five being common. So we also try to look at its condition and to figure out the the con or uh, the condition of, of the occurrence where it's at. Again, it's on a simple scale of A being very good condition, B being good, C being fair, and D being degraded beyond restoration. To find the sites for each location, we first looked at the site description sheets, which provided us with information about the site and the GPS coordinates. We then entered the coordinates into the GPS, and by using a combination of following the GPS, referencing the atlas, and looking at the site pictures provided, we were able to pinpoint the sites. This worksheet was the guideline for evaluating the different wetland ecosystems in this study. It shows the components that we used to evaluate the wetlands that we analyzed. These are the explanations to the components. Flood attenuation and storage is ranked as either high, moderate, or low. This function describes the ability of the riparian area to store flood waters that overflow the river banks. This is determined by an evaluation of the size of the adjacent floodplain area. The larger the floodplain, then the higher the ranking is for the wetland. Shoreline stabilization refers to how intact the river banks are. This is determined by looking for evidence of erosion as well as vegetated banks that will prevent erosion. Groundwater discharge refers to whether or not the wetland is spring-fed. This is determined by examining a wetland to see if it is receiving water from a connected waterway or if it is a single pool that is the source of the wetland water. Groundwater recharge is classified as either a yes or a no. It refers to whether or not the water in a wetland will flow to another location or will be absorbed into the ground. This is determined by looking for evidence of porous soils and a constricted outlet. The wetland is then given a classification of yes or no in terms of groundwater recharge after it has been evaluated for these criteria. Elemental cycling is classified as either normal or disrupted. It refers to the cycling of nutrients that converts elements from one form to another. This is determined by normal amounts of detritus and primary productivity in the wetland. The wetland is then given a classification of normal or disrupted in terms of elemental cycling after it has been evaluated for these criteria. Removal of imported nutrients, toxicants, and sediments is ranked as either high, moderate, or low. It refers to the ability of the wetland to filter out nutrients, toxicants, and sediments from the water with aquatic vegetation. This is determined by examining the amount of aquatic and riparian vegetation present in a wetland that can trap transported nutrients, toxicants, or sediments. The more aquatic and riparian vegetation that is present, the higher the ranking. In general, wildlife and fish habitat is ranked as either high, moderate, or low. It refers to the available habitat for animals and vegetation in the wetland. This is determined by looking for multi-aged vegetation and signs of wildlife such as scat. The more vegetation and signs of wildlife that is found, the higher the ranking for the wetland. Production export and food chain support is ranked as either high, moderate, or low. Production export refers to the transportation of organic material from the wetland to a downstream location. Food chain support refers to the use of nutrients, carbon, and or plant species as a food source by different species. These two components are determined by looking at vegetation presence, velocity of stream flow, and evidence of high productivity. The more evidence of these things, the higher the ranking. So this is plot GK03 at Pawnee. This is the original photo that we're comparing it to, taken in June 1995. And then this is what we're thinking.
So even though this is, it's still in this short grass, very dry habitat, wetlands, whether they be, you know, ephemeral or intermittent, are the, what I call, hot spots of, of activity. And that's why they're so important in my mind. Wetlands as, as a whole for our, all our landscapers, you know, less than two to three percent of our landscape are wetlands, but yet probably over 90% of animals and birds use them. Nine five GK02. This is our reference picture, and this is the tree that we see in that picture. And we have arrived at our site. This is the Cachalapuda River, spot number 96GK08. We think it's pretty similar, even with the High Park fire, we'll see a lot of fire damage here. But on our right hand side on this slope, we see a lot of rocky areas, which we think could definitely be just right here. So yeah, we think we found the spot. So habitat diversity in this area, we'd consider that high. Yeah, we have this like scat, that dude's kind of fish over there. Functioning overall, though, very high, well. High functioning, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, high functioning water. Yeah, and we have some regrowth going on up there in the burn area. The sediment in the river, it's kind of like there's some, but it's not excessive to the point where it's like impeding the water quality. Like, I mean, and there's detritus and stuff. Yeah. But there's not an over like kill amount of it. Mm -hmm. Element cycling. Ooh, element cycling. So I'm gonna take a peek into the river. The water looks that. so healthy. It yeah. does look good. Like you can tell over here, there's some areas that it's more static and it has some accumulation of like nutrients, I think. But nutrients from like the burned area. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's nothing that seems like anthropogenic. If anything, I see build up in areas that it's pretty stagnant, but like it's moving everywhere else that it's moving. It's very clear. There's no build up on any of the rocks or anything. So uniqueness, this is a four? Yeah, four out of five. Yeah. <laughs> Chain is a pretty high area. Yeah. I agree. This is Cachalapuda River. Um, this is site number 96LS08. Um, we can see that there's a little stub right there. That would be that stub. And then this photo clears it up pretty well um, right here. I got seen less evidence of wildlife here. I haven't really seen any scat. I feel like if we were over on that side, we'd see a lot more because that's, that's like where it's connected to. There's a little bit of pine tree here, like not pine tree, but the pine needles here that is collected. Um, and it's just kind of in stagnant water and it's, um, there's stream running through it. There's so much moss or buildup or um, algae. Uh, maybe algae of the sort. Um, so I guess say like, honestly, this moving water is carrying some sort of nutrients. Yeah, it is. Cause I, yeah, because I don't see it here, but I see yeah. the water over there. But overall, like, great. quality and great, yeah. i say this is me. I would agree. You can see new stands of trees. Yeah, that, especially like that growth over there, you can tell yeah. things are coming in. And There's definitely 
less evidence of human activity here. Like we're not seeing like socks <laughs> or like People fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. That's all I'm yeah. yeah. Uniqueness, I would say it's it's pretty high. I'd yeah. I'd give this a five. The differences in seasonality added challenges when comparing the pictures to the actual sites. Even when considering this limitation, the wetlands in Pawnee had noticeable impacts from humans and livestock, whereas the Poudre Canyon appeared to be relatively unaltered from the past couple of decades, except for evidence of the High Park Fire in 2012. Overall, the two sites in Pawnee received functioning integrity rankings of a B and an A-. The two Poudre Canyon sites both received A's.